Welcome, everybody, to the Nerd Brand Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Davis. I'm here with our creative director of Nerd Brand Agency, Mitch Gregory. Yep, that's right. He's got two first names. And Jonathan Payne. Oh, he's got finger guns, too. If you're on YouTube, be sure to check that out, because that's fun. And we have also with us Jonathan Payne, who is our CXO of Nerd Brand. Jonathan, you want to tell people what CXO means? Because we were calling you CMO, and then you were like... Sixo. Eh, uh, I think it means um, it's an, a translation for an old wooden ship. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Corvette, like one of those Corvettes, yeah. a French ship. It's a certain they, model yeah. of ship. Yeah. Uh, San Diego. Yeah, yeah. It's chief experience officer, I do yeah. believe. Yes, it is, sir. Uh, I always like how they take the X and use that for anything like experience. User, well, it like, couldn't be an E, so. Yeah, I know. Well, that's true. That's, all, that's already taken. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, it's the person who sits above, I guess, probably account managers and things like that mm-hmm. to make sure the customer experience is ideal. Yeah, yeah. Because we were introducing Jonathan as our director of accounts. I would always lead with that because I felt that everybody could feel like, like, oh, this is the guy that's going to buy me cake or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Just make you feel, you know, give well, a good it, feeling. My focus has changed a little bit. It's to... uh not just answer emails and phone calls, but, <laughs> you know, to uh, elevate the customer experience in a way that the onboarding is good. We're taking care of people. We're giving them little surprises as they build a relationship with us and, and have a good you know, a good experience with NerdBrain. Yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit of that come from these Slack messages from John. You know, just after a while of the Go Cubs randomly mm-hmm. appearing. In I don't know why anybody puts me in charge of anything, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just... We just, do, John. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, it's just after a while, I was just sitting there like, you know, when you interact with John, it really is an experience. And it's freaking hilarious. So I'm just like, well, we just... Ah, just take that one. That's how we I'll do titles it. here. Yeah. Didn't get a raise or nothing. Yeah, I know. Well... Talk to the owners. No parking space. <sighs> uh, actually, pretty good parking space at home. He yeah. does, yeah. <laughs> it's his driveway. <laughs> Pull right up, right to the door. <laughs> Somebody was actually asking me. I, we're going to get to the topic of the show if you're listening. I swear to God, but it was really funny. Somebody okay. was asking me, like, "Hey, uh, can we leave like this?" I'll just say, it, like, St. Matthew's is doing this thing where they leave the stuffed. Um, mm-hmm. I, I can't was, remember the name. Yeah, and I was at a networking event last night, and they were like drawing names on what the next business was that was going to possibly get. You know, Brecky. That's what it was. Brecky. Yeah. And uh, what is Brecky? Brecky a little is stuffed a, plush. Yeah. A little plush thingy. Yeah, they're leaving places and doing this little find. Where where's Brecky? Why do the well, nah, this know. is going to get into a thing? We're have to have Josh Bre- back. Yeah, I need to know why Bre- why it's called Brecky. Uh, that yeah, we'll Becky have, was too simple, I guess. <laughs> but Brick Brick and Rich Lane does it maybe have to do with that maybe? Um, I don't know. Anyway, well, you know what? Because we're bringing it up and we do know that they listen to this show. You guys can go to YouTube and leave us a comment and go like, "Stop making fun of Brecky." <laughs> um, but yes, uh, leave Brecky alone. They were like, I was just sitting there at this event and I'm just like, please don't draw nerd brand because I was just thinking to myself like, what are you going to do? You going to leave it on his front porch? That's just going to be weird. We could bring it to the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we could, but you know, we do not have an office. Is what right we're saying. There. Yeah, that was that was the point of me saying that we don't have an office. We're 100 percent remote still. Wherever we are is our office. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we're in your office. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, I just look over in a closet and peek it open just to get. I just wanted a pen. Why is John staring at me? I'm just answering emails. <laughs> Leave me alone. It's the only place I could find peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, this episode is titled "You're Killing Your Director of Marketing." Poor soul. Yeah. I've seen, um, you know, it seems like a that that role is turning into this uh, unicorn. I'll say that. It's funny I say that because a while back somebody said, like, stop saying that because in 2021 everybody got tired of hearing that word. <laughs> but that's the only way I know how to describe how that role is being treated with respects to job duties. Responsibilities. Yeah. Um, and I've said before that, you know, I've sort of sat in that role, and it was like, all right, the only thing I could do is like, all right, this week I'm going to do this, this week I'm going to do that, and this week I'm going to... And by the time I got to the fourth week, which is an entire service line of its own, of course, I was basically starting all over. So any movement I had made, I had really just taken two, step, two steps forward, one step back. Mm-hmm. Um, so sales and marketing right now are getting slapped together. Uh, directors of marketing are now being looked upon as directors of sales or something. Um, they're related, but they're not the same. Yeah. So while the two business functions are different, they both share a common goal to attract prospects and convert them to customers, ultimately generating revenue. 
Um, John, you've been sitting in the marketing seat, experience with it for years, doing it as well as managing accounts. How do you feel about this? <laughs> I feel Your great. Thought. Your thoughts? I feel great. I've not worked with a ton of sales teams overall. Just uh, and being mostly in the agency world, there's usually not a big dedicated sales team. It's usually a new business team, and those folks are account managers and account directors going in to pitch. Um, I mean, I think the big breakdown is marketing focuses on aggregate and customer bases and, and strategy. Sales focuses on an individual prospect or an individual lead, and that's where a lot of the, the tension comes in because they're just of different mindsets. You know, they're, they're marketing's looking at things at a very kind of high level, philosophical, strategic level. Sales is down in the tactics. How do I get this person from, you know, from uh, the first discovery call to the proposal stage and closed mm -hmm. and handed off well? And so there's there's just a natural, I think, tension of focus. That and, I mean, I mean, sales is outside the building, and mark and and marketing is the inside the building, pretty much. They're the one marketing in my mind. If I'm wrong, you guys chime in. But my perception is. Marketing is building the roadmaps. They're 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 taking in data and building roadmaps, whereas sales it's is executing. out there is that right? Well, but they're out there with the customer, meeting specific needs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, so one's bigger picture, one's more it's micro macro. Right. Yeah, marketing tends to float in the direction of you know. Of course, we've heard the term big data, and they they like the data, mm -hmm. but analysis. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: there's good data and there's bad data. Uh, right now on the YouTube channel Dry Bar, there's a guy that I think is probably one of the best comedians they've ever had, who explains the difference between a nerd and a dork, and we've shared that on our. At least I've shared that on my stuff. And uh, another clip has come out where he breaks down statistics and he says like 1.4 million people in the world are, or 1.4 billion people in the world are Chinese. So that means the rest are not. So the statistics break down to uh, one out of five kids born will be Chinese. Now you think about that. So John, when you have your fifth child, uh Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Or, it, so. or if, or if Mitch and his wife have a fifth child, it's guaranteed to be Chinese. That's sort of what he's trying to get at. <laughs> About how data well, my, can be messed is. up. Yeah, yours is because John's <laughs> wife is Chinese. But it's like at the end of the day, it's saying that everybody's fifth child would be Chinese right. if you break the statistics. My down. wife would be shocked. Yeah, that. Well, well, we don't need to go there. Everybody's would <laughs> like. But at the end of the day, it's like that's how data can be. You know, when you say data, it sounds empirical yeah. and it sounds defined and everything. And but no, it's not. It can be. It can be like skewed. It can be like just a number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think the other challenge is systems between the two. They have they have different you know stages of of development in their strategies and sales strategy and marketing strategy are just fundamentally different. And so to have a a internal system, whether it's project management system, CRM, all those tools that support these two departments have to communicate, have to have to work in tandem. Yeah, and getting that just from a technology standpoint is difficult. Much less to get the people involved. To use it collaboratively and, yep. and as a team. It's always the salesperson getting them to, because salespeople, they could have four or five appointments in a day, uh, whether if it's a phone call or in person or an event. And, you know, I have been very diligent in trying to leave notes. We actually had this happen with, with Coral because Coral's out there doing sales and uh, using Slack and how we organize things. She saw a lead. And uh, it wasn't a lead that I actually planned on. I mean, I was actually trying to refer this person to somebody else just because this other person needed help. That's all I wanted. That's all the call was for, but it ended up flipping into a lead. Coral come back and said, wait a minute, I know her. I know that she's like a customer, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, and then immediately after that, she was like, here, mind, I see it, click up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and all the notes were there. Now, I'm kind of an anomaly in that way because I'm very much – I know myself well enough that if I don't take the notes and I don't write them down after what happened, then the meeting didn't happen. Mm -hmm. How are either of you supposed to know if I tell you this name, you're going to be like, what'd you talk about? <laughs> so salespeople are sometimes not very good about using a CRM. And I think that we think because it's called a CRM, we think customer, <laughs> you know, right? right. But it's really like an internal tool. So everybody kind of knows what the crap is going on. Mm -hmm. And that's really the big issue with sales because salespeople are not archivists. They're not 
historians. You know, I didn't, we didn't bring Coral into the team to be an historian and record right. every meeting she goes to, but at least the name and the context of the meeting we need, because John may see an avenue, you might have an avenue because of the experience we have. Mm-hmm. And then now that Coral has that context that I provided, she can decide whether or not if she wants to come in and pick up the account and then work with John on it right? or what, you know, or if Mitch needs to step in and talk, you know. If he and I both need to go and talk process and creative and start brainstorming. Which I think is something for this particular example. I won't say who it is, but I think for this person, you know who it is. Yeah, I don't think I need to be at the at the next meeting. At least I'll be there to hand off, but I don't think after that. I think if Coral and Mitch are there, I'm, I'm down. I'm out. I've done mm-hmm. my job. You know, the context of what was discussed and what they needed and what's going on, the familiarity is all documented, so it's easy to pick up. It's sort of like playing sports ball. Somebody's got to run a play. If nobody's out there knowing what they're doing, the quarterback's just going to throw the ball and pray and cross their fingers that somebody catches it. There's Mm -hmm. an actual intention going on with every play. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of how your team needs to work uh, with sales. And there's a timer. Yes. To to hike the ball. (laughs) If you let that prospect just float without hitting them with the proper marketing or picking up that phone again or handing them off to the right person internally. It's dead. I mean, the, the momentum is lost. Yeah, yeah. Follow-up is absolutely crucial. Uh, it needs to be paramount in every salesperson's mind is follow-up, pace of the follow-up as well. Uh, you know, there's certain industries where high-pressure sales works, and you need to be every day or whatever it is. You know, car salesmen are that way. That mm-hmm. It's high-pressure sales. Other service sales, you know, you kind of need to lay back a little bit. So there's different ways and tactics of that. Mm-hmm. These are all things that marketing people are not – going to think about right it's not their job that's first of all second it's just not an it's a it's like a it's not natural (laughs) so Mm -hmm. why why do you guys think the trend has been to combine those roles or to assume that those roles are are the same why has that happened for me i mean aside from budget yeah i think that's (laughs) probably the biggest one i think uh people it's kind of like web design and development it's like you're so intertwined and you need to be well, why not just put one person in charge of both and they'll oversee it and it'll it'll function yeah. more smoothly. And it's just, uh, like you said, there are two different mindsets. Left brain, right brain, really. Right. Marketing is going to generally be more creative in their approach. They're going to be more strategic, use more data in a sense. Sales is relationships, you know, in, in the sense that we're talking about it, which is really like B2B service-based relationship selling. So, yeah, so, yeah. so how does this relationship, tell me if you guys think this is close to how it should work. You've got the marketing team that's all about, about, about gleaning data, gleaning information, digesting that information, and, and packaging it in such a way that it translates to the customer in a way that's meaningful, mm-hmm. that explains what their needs are and how, how you fit them. It's sales job to take basically what marketing has done and translate that and express that and explain it mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. hold the customer's hand through the process of what all of that means and what the, and what the next steps are. Is that, does that make sense? Well, I think at, at a high level. Yeah. Uh, and I think what you call this over here in marketing is I mean, the, the term that's floating around now is demand generation. It's marketing's job to generate demand so that they pick up the phone and, and call the salesperson essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like mining for gold. You know, you have to keep going through the rock and you find a vein. Like, if you get across um, quartz, <laughs> you're going to find gold. That's kind of the rule. But when you find a vein of gold, you don't stop digging <laughs> and then go out front and dig a new hole. Right. You know, salespeople are going to stay in that vein and they're going to go that way. We're looking for data that helps us do that better. Mm-hmm. So if this zip code is really converting at a high rate at the revenue numbers that are needed to stay in business... Marketing will say, go there, but take this message with you. Mm-hmm. And that's, right. where, that's, of course, where branding comes in because the marketer is going to go to the brand manager and go like, hey. What do we say to these people? Yeah. What do we say in ads that I'm about to put out there that's going to support that salesperson? Because when that salesperson mm-hmm. interacts with that business, there is a chance that that person has seen an ad. So when you're face-to-face, they're like, I know who you are. Or Had it happen the other day for yeah. the first time. And I was yep. like, this is, this is great. Yeah. We were in a prospect meeting, Coral and I, and, and the, the prospect was like, I, I think I've heard your name before. Um, and I think I've seen an ad. Yeah. So 
And that's the other yep. thing. Marketing should continue that process, even through the sales process. You know, we were at a almost a closing stage of the deal, and you know they had seen an ad recently. So there's there's a benefit to marketing really being intertwined with that sales process and yeah, knowing where people are in the the sales cycle so that they can put out proper advertising and retargeting ads and things like that. So yeah. basically, marketing arms sales. Yes. Gives them the tools. Yeah. The, the, the equation is really simple, and it's an old one. It's consistent messaging plus consistent marketing equals consistent sales. You have your path of what's priority. Message gets lost because you hear message, and we'll address it on another podcast again, but it's like that's branding. That's their job. Marketing is just taking what I think, John, you've really eloquently stated this on your LinkedIn post. Marketing is just taking the tools they've been given. If the brand manager says, we're building a house, and they hand you a banana and a kaleidoscope, you're going to go like, I don't, what am I doing with that? You That's know? only happened twice. <laughs> yeah, and then so sales is like, well, I'm just going to make crap up and then just hope I find that vein of gold, yeah. you know, and that's kind of how a lot of times And you'll be successful works. some, but yeah. your, your close rates are going to go down pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, right. I, yeah, and that's not something that the salesperson's watching. Yeah, that's I mean, something marketing is. I mean, and that's that's a situation where sales is left to the point where, well, if I can't give them something smart, <laughs> I've just got to make something that sounds yeah, or sounds looks, good, sounds good mm-hmm. or looks good, mm-hmm. which may win the moment, but it's in the long term, it's not helping anything. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the other. There's a there's a whole cycle here that sales has to come back to marketing and, and adequately communicate. This is what we're seeing out in the field. This is the kind of message that's resonating. And I think we've done this really well, but we're a small organization, and I think it gets hard as you get bigger. But uh, sales has to come back and adequately explain the marketing. I need these materials. I need the message to change in this way. Mm-hmm. Marketing has to be receptive, right? Mm-hmm. And that's where you just kind of get this. <laughs> Either yeah. sales doesn't communicate very well, or marketing doesn't listen very well, or both. Well, And, and everybody just starts pointing fingers. To me, isn't this sort of where it comes in? Where basically marketing and, and sales have to have this have to work the same way in that I've got to give you not just data, but I've got to give you a rationale. I've got to give you rationales for why this mm-hmm. this is the approach. Yeah, sales needs to come back to marketing and say, "Well, I got to give you a rationale for why they feel this way or why why this is mm-hmm. happening." That's why we need to change direction, and it's rather than just fluid. say they don't like it. Right, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. always fluid. You know, yeah. the, the market's changing constantly, so there's that's where the we talk about the systems and the methods of communication and, and especially with a remote company, you've got to have these systems that allow for that collaboration or just both the departments are going to side. I mean, just like I mean, we yeah. see everything happening. Yeah. Thinking back, I mean, other agencies I've worked at, one of the last things you wanted to ha- have, have, a, have a, an account manager do when they take creative to a client is, is ask the question, do you like it? <laughs> Yeah, we don't okay. do that. Uh, yeah, and, the, and, the, and the, <laughs> the the other thing you you don't want them to come back with is for them to say, "Well, they don't like it." Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't help anyone. Right. Yeah, at why? All. Why don't you like well, it? Or what was the reason? Yeah. What What was? Where was the breakdown? Mm-hmm. What What was the issue? What were the problems? If marketing is doing its job and sales is doing its job, you're probably not going to have that kind of feedback. Mm-hmm. You're at least going to if 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 a client doesn't like it, it's not a matter of yeah. don't like it. They're going to say something is off target, and they're going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. And and that that helps everybody in the process to to sharpen to sharpen the work mm-hmm. or sharpen the project to to make it more on target. Like I said, staying out of the realm of I mean, we could do a whole podcast on this. Why you stay want to stay out of the realm of subjectives in dealing with in marketing, dealing with sales and sales dealing with the customer, and the mm-hmm. customer dealing with sales. You, you've got to dig deeper mm-hmm. than just the top layer of first impressions, and this is good, this is bad. This is, I don't like it. It doesn't feel right. All of those things. <laughs> it needs you, to pop. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. You notice I don't exactly. use that word, because I know exactly. that if I say... a little more sexy. Yeah, make it sexy, <laughs> make it pop. Yeah, when you get into that, but... Yeah. You know, sales and marketing, I mean, we're, you know, we have to believe in the quality of the work that is produced or the product. Otherwise, Mm -hmm. it is very difficult to come off convincing in that because you're preaching a message. You're saying, this is great, and here's why. Are you interested? Mm -hmm. Or you come across somebody that says, I need this, 
and you're kind of listening and you have to think if you're really savvy enough, you kind of think like, okay, they need that, but I've heard this before. What they really need is this because we have three accounts that have had that very same thing happen yeah. who have actually grown into the actual need. Mm-hmm. And what sales needs is to hear those stories, to see them. And I mean, right down to the name of the customer, the business, the whole thing, all the, mm-hmm. all the bits need to be out on the table because then the, the salesperson will look at that and go, that's what I need to replicate. And then that's how you trump data. Like the data is solid, trust me, at that point. But you've got to put it together with mm-hmm. something that's tangible in that way. Or you Otherwise, start there and you yeah. see if the data supports exactly. your, your, yes. your hypothesis. I guess. Well, exactly. And that's, that's why you have to, okay, we know A, we know B, we know C. To address A, B, and C, we do one, two, and three. Mm-hmm. So you've got a you have a defined goal, you have a defined objective, and you have defined steps on how to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and all through the chain, right? That needs to be accomplished. Yeah, like if you make signs, people think well, that's a sign that hangs out front. Well, no, there's interior signs. A hell, of a lot more of that going on, especially now with COVID. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Stand here and wait. All right. That is a sign, you know? So sign companies need to be like, well, I can make that and slap that on a floor. All right. I've got the installers for it. But do your customers know that? Your yeah. salespeople are probably like, oh, I can get this. I'm going to go to every Kroger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and tell, and talk but about it would it. sell a lot easier if they had already seen it a few times. Right. You know? Yeah. And that's yeah. where marketing steps in. Yeah. Yeah. So marketing can actually hit the digital piece on that. Hit the general managers, whatever. Direct mail. Yeah, who's ever. Yeah, direct mail. Everybody forgets the direct mail. Everybody always forgets the old school stuff because, Mm -hmm. I don't know, they just, I guess. I don't know. It's keeping the postal service in business. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I think we are. Yeah. Well, (laughs) not just that. Well, as an aside, as an aside, you'll occasionally get a box. I mean, maybe not as much from Amazon, but Wayfair, things like that. There's sort of indirect direct mail that they use Mm -hmm. when you get a package. There'll be a postcard in there that, that promotes something else. Yeah. All right. So philosophically, it still works. It's yeah, still it's like works. the digital version of the related posts yeah. at the bottom of the web page. <laughs> it mm-hmm. really is. It's just, a, it's the same tactic. It's, it's like, oh, different. well, I've got you here. By the way. Yeah. Take a look at this. Yeah. I mean, if I bought sunglasses, maybe I would like, you know, the lens, microfiber lens cleaners, you know? I mean, there's all, there's a reason that Amazon at the bottom of this page, customers who bought this also bought and then, mm-hmm. you know, then the reviews. Like, and then you can bundle all the things that other people bought with the item that you bought. You right. know? I mean, that's ingenious, and that's the power of e in that way. Okay, so how does that relate from a marketing standpoint and from a sales standpoint? I think from a marketing standpoint, it's just you have to look at, like, if you're running e-commerce, John, wouldn't you just look just at the straight numbers? straight data. Yeah. yeah, it's just straight. Like, well, and talking to customers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, actually... Being involved, I mean, when it comes to e-com, the marketing team being very close to customer support, that, I mean, that's critical mm-hmm. for the director of marketing or whoever sits over top of of the marketing and advertising. They need to at least have a an account where they can go in and see what kind of support tickets are coming in. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up here with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce definition about sales versus marketing. Yes, the United States Chamber of Commerce. It actually, there is one. Um in the simplest of terms, marketing is building awareness of your organization and brand to potential customers. Sales is turning that viewership into a profit by converting those potential customers into actual ones. There That's you have it. Pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, we've discussed why businesses try to combine these roles and also on the subject of marketing, we've discussed some that, you know, terms that maybe people don't use anymore, like made for TV. Mm-hmm. Nobody, have you noticed that? I haven't heard it in a like while. A made-for-TV movie. Yeah, yeah. It's just online streaming now. Mm-hmm. So when you're out selling something, you know, obviously terms are important. You need to know the meaning of them, but you hopefully have a real-world example. Well, hopefully you, people get that out of this podcast as well. But I thought it would be really funny to just talk about some terms that we don't hear anymore, uh, like Rolodex. Mm. John, what contacts are in your Rolodex? I didn't say, mm. like, Rolex. <laughs> what's in What's in ClickUp? <laughs> I don't hear that too often. I, I probably heard it a few years ago. I yeah. think it, even just over the last few years, Rolodex has like just gone away. It's, it's a, I mean, and when I've heard it, it's almost it's almost like a generic term now for your contact list. Right? Who's in your phone? Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like soft. It's like people use Coke as a, as as just slang for right. soft drink. But yeah, people say Rolodex now, but they don't I mean. Very few people have that that gizmo on their desk that they roll that's got the little cards in mm-hmm. it. 
Um, I still keep business you, cards. I have a. Oh right? yeah, I see. Oh, yeah. I see salespeople that have business cards just stacked on their mm-hmm. desk, and then they're in you know boxes. And I've then, got a little index card box. That yeah. I, hey, that, I, from school. The value of business <laughs> card is it it personalizes that interaction one step further mm-hmm. in a person to person context. So that that the value there still exists. Well, mm-hmm. I'll tell you what. For the next show. Let's maybe hone in on that a little bit. So if you enjoyed this episode of the Nerd Brand Podcast, please go to YouTube, search for Nerd Brand. You'll find us, like, subscribe, and help us get that vanity earl. You can find us everywhere online at nerdbrandagency.com. And Mitch has a special request for all of our listeners and viewers. Ring the bell. <laughs> Please. A little bit more than that. I think you were talking about. Please. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ring, ring, <laughs> ring the bell. Very sad. Ring the bell. He did. Ring the bell because it lets us know you're there. But the other thing is leave, <laughs> leave some comments and questions in, in down in the comments section. Mm-hmm. Give us some questions. Give us some ideas or topics maybe that we haven't discussed that you'd like to hear us talk about. Yeah. Give us some feedback. I like this. I like your hair. Uh, <laughs> you know. Okay. Great shirt. Um, you really need to lose weight. Well, okay. That's I don't fine. need to hear that. I already feel. I'm that. having pizza tonight, and I'm not apologizing for it. Uh, but yeah, leave Friday's us, cheat day anyway. Yeah, so. Leave us yeah. some comments. We're also, you know, you can do that on Facebook, and you know, talk to John. John watches our social media. I know it may seem like no one's watching, but we're watching. Oh, we're watching. We are watching you. But anyways, we appreciate of all of, all of our listeners and subscribers. I know for a fact we've gotten a few this week because I've actually made them get their phones out and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> That's tell, the best way to do it. And tell your friends. <laughs> tell your friends. Tell your friends come on over and listen to this podcast and us doing stuff. We will be getting a little nerdier with this show, again, because obviously it's nerd brand. But uh, that's not really necessarily our fault. Uh, Marvel and DC Comics needs to make some new stuff and put them out <laughs> on the shows. Hey, so, the new Moon Knight trailer launched. Ah, uh, I know. I'm very, I'm very excited about that. I'm a uh, Moonlight, f- a Moon, uh, a Moonlight, Moonlight. You're a Moonlight, Moonlight fan, really? I, like Bruce Willis, huh? Yeah, I love Moonlight. <laughs> for all you, for all you boomers out there, I love Moonlight. Um, but Moon Knight was a comic book character I was, yeah. I liked a lot back in the day. Anyways, again, thank you for listening, and make sure to turn in next week and keep your nerd brain strong. <laughs>